Felicia, who do you most want to reach with the stories that are in, in this exhibit <coughs> from Freedom Shadow? And, and, and give us a little perspective on, on the society's role in taking this out into the community, to colleges and universities mm -hmm. like Montgomery College, like Howard University. Right. Uh, what's the goal for the exhibit? I think that we want to reach um, particularly young people uh, and students uh, uh, throughout the country. We, we want to make sure that uh, they understand the story. Uh, every year, hundreds of eighth graders <laughs> come to the Capitol, mm -hmm. you know, as their, as their big field trip uh, from all over the country. So uh, what better way to introduce this building to them than by uh, sharing this story with them? Uh, and and I, I think that it's, um, it's very important to, to share not only this part of America's history, but, but just uh, the way that, that African Americans impact American history in general. We need to continue to share these stories with, uh, with young people, with children. And, and of course, we want to reach the public at large. So this exhibit has traveled to universities and institutions across the country. It's, it has traveled to uh, the Georgia State Capitol in Atlanta. So we're, we're, we have reached um, uh, several cities, and our goal is just to continue to share this, this, this story and to, to make the history of the, the Capitol a complete history. We're not necessarily trying to uh, highlight one particular ethnic group, okay? We, we want to just um, make this story a complete story and tell the whole truth in, in telling the history of the Capitol. And professors, you teach this or other parts of history every day. What lessons can we learn that we, or should we learn, maybe it's a better way that we could apply to the world today? Well, I think one of them is that uh, there's a lot of hidden history that's only now being uncovered. So, uh, and if you, you know, you asked before about the sort of gee whiz surprises, a lot of them come from my students mm -hmm. who say, well, you know, I never learned this in high school. How come they never taught us this in high school? So I think that's one of the things. Yeah, that, uh, that I hear that all the time, that question from students, really relative to African American history and mm -hmm. to other groups who've been underrepresented right. in U.S. Right. history, to mm -hmm. about Native Americans, about women's role in the nation. And the question that students ask is, why wasn't I taught this? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, in fact, they're angry about it. And I always recommend they visit their high school and right. ask them. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, I, I certainly agree that that's the, the larger point of all of this. I mentioned earlier that um, it, we've talked a lot about the construction of the Capitol and the history in so many ways, um, but the policy making, the, import, uh, the, the role of the United S States Capitol, the, of Congress itself, um, can you talk a little bit about uh, what kind of information is reflected in the exhibit from the standpoint of, of giving people an understanding of the politicians uh, from mm -hmm. an African American background who made it through the United States Capitol? Right. Well, we do um, feature uh, several uh, African American members of Congress in the exhibit and talk about how they were instrumental in, uh, in desegregating the Capitol. Um, like uh, Professor Smith mentioned earlier, Oscar DePriest, that was part of his platform was to desegregate the Capitol, uh, as well as uh, other issues that concerned African Americans at the time. Um, disenfranchisement, these types of issues, voting issues. Um, I think we, uh, I had discussed earlier with someone about anti-lynching laws, mm -hmm. um, which was also another pursuit of, of African American members of Congress uh, in those earlier days. So um, those are just some of the uh, legislative concerns uh, that, are, that are mentioned in the exhibit as well as in the online version of the exhibit. And one of the things that you mentioned near the end of the exhibit that's sort of come back into style, if style's maybe not the right word, but come back is Emancipation Day. Yes. Can you talk about the original and now sort of the newer one in the district? Well, uh, the Emancipation, the District of Columbia Emancipation Act was uh, unique in that it provided compensation 
to owners of enslaved people for their loss of property. So, think about it. yes, so um, <laughs> these uh, owners filed petitions uh, to the District of Columbia and received uh, $300 in payment uh, in compensation. And emancipation from that point, or enslaved people in the district at that point were freed, and then there were celebrations annually uh, in the district um, to celebrate emancipation, parades and these types of things. Well, that went on until the early 20th century, and then there was this drop and, and no celebrations, and then in the last uh, two or three years, there, uh, the mayor, the former mayor, uh, Williams of the District of Columbia, uh, made Emancipation Day uh, a district-wide government holiday. So, and there are uh, activities surrounded by this holiday, lectures and presentations, and I think there are outdoor celebrations and parades. So, uh, now uh, we're starting again to pick back up on on this celebration and and uh, on on that act. Wow. Yes. Alonzo and John, we probably have just a few seconds for some final thoughts. But having uh, discussed this I exhibit and haven't had a chance to share uh, this this wonderful exhibit with the students of Montgomery College, um, what what are some of those lasting um, messages that you, that you think are most important that they take away from the exhibit from Freedom Shadow? That slaves played a key role in Washington D.C.'s history. Um, you know, it's they they were the people who cooked the food and dug the ditches and carried the water and built the buildings. And then, in addition, they were politicians. Yeah. You know, in the post Civil War period, right. there's congressmen, there's two U.S. senators, which is double the number of black U.S. senators we have today. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's 130, 140 years ago. Right. Yeah. People want to get more information, very easy to find. We're going to put website information up from Freedom Shadow, African Americans in the United States Capitol. And thank you so much to thank all of you for being you. with us today. And we want to thank you for watching this edition of Campus Conversations. I'm Steve Simon. And I'm Fritzi Bodenheimer. If you have comments about today's show or suggestions for future episodes, send an email to campus.conversations at montgomerycollege.edu. For all of us here at Campus Conversations, thanks for watching. Thank you.